I'm Hannah Cousins, I'm a professional portrait photographer and today I'm going to be showing you how to shoot female focused sports campaigns. A couple of years ago, 2020, I shot a campaign for ASICS, the sportswear brand. It was a great shoot, we basically had seven different athletes from all parts of Europe flying in on one day and it was my job to make sure I shot the campaign and got it all done, so it's very high pressure. Now today what we're going to be doing is something similar. We'll start off in the studio and they'll be shooting outside, introducing the sort of elements of running around and just I'm going to be showing you how to use flash in the studio and then out on location and basically just showing you how I do it. Now one of the most important parts of course is gear and I'm sure you want to be knowing what I'm using. So we're going to move over to the table and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm using and talk about why I'm using it too. Let's show you firstly the camera and the lenses that I'm going to be using today. So. I have in here a Sony a7R4. Now the reason I use that is for the resolution. It's just incredible. Now it gives me options to be able to crop into the image, but nine times out of 10 as well, if I'm shooting commercially, a lot of my work is going to be blown up huge. It can be on exhibition walls, it could be on the side of the bus, it could be anything. So having that resolution is crucial. Now that is why I'm shooting with the R4. Now lens-wise, what we've got is my kind of go-to, this is my 85mm 1.4 G Master, which is my absolute favourite. The detail in this is just incredible. Now when I'm shooting portraits, this is my go-to and the reason I use it 90% of the time is I like the focal length for shooting sort of headshots where I tend to shoot most of the time. Also the distance between myself and the model, it's comfortable and we don't get any distortion. So this is my absolute favourite, it's just, I love this lens, it's incredible. Now. The other thing I'm going to take out with me is I've got the 1635 2.8 G Master as well. Now I don't shoot wide angle that often because you know being a portrait photographer most of the time I'm close up. However, having a wide angle like this is just fantastic because it just means that when I am sort of in these sort of tight locations or if I want to shoot something a little bit wider, it gives me the scope to be able to do that. And this lens is so sharp for a wide angle, I can't believe it. I've never seen a lens like it. Um, so that's the reason we're going to be using the 1635. Now you'll notice here that I have got a second body. This is my, I have two uh, A7R4s, which I know is a little excessive. However, for me, when we're out and about changing lenses, there is always the danger that we might end up with getting some dust into the sensor. So that's the reason that I've got two bodies on me today. However, of course, I haven't always had two bodies and it's been absolutely fine to just use one. Now finally, the other lens I'm going to be taking with me is the 70 to 200 2.8 G Master again because when we're sort of photographing the runner I don't know sort of whether I want to sort of shoot in and get some tight shots or just kind of come out a little bit but having that compression in the telephoto as well just is wonderful being able to drop down to 2.8 to blur all the background it's just great so pretty much these are my kind of three go-to lenses because they cover most of the scope of what I need to shoot but without a doubt the 85 is definitely my favorite Next, let's talk about my favorite thing, which is the lighting gear. So, inside here, we have three lights. I may use more, but at the moment, what I'm gonna be focusing on are these guys. Now, this is the Profoto B10X Plus. This is 500 watt seconds. And the reason I love this, it's a battery powered unit. So the battery is just on the side here. And it just means that I can shoot absolutely anywhere. I'm not, I haven't shot with cables for years now. I shoot with these in the studio as well, but these are perfect for on location. Best thing about the B10X Plus is I've got a fast recycle time, plenty of power if I need it as well. And who knows, when it's outside, the sun may break and I might need that full power or I might be shooting a little lower. But having it there is just brilliant. So, at least two of these, just to be sure, but we may have more. Also in the bag, I have an A1X as well. Now this is a tiny, tiny little light. Again, all battery powered. So you can either use this sort of on top of the hot shoe, you can shoot with it on camera. But how I tend to use it is off camera. Now this is perfect for sort of just getting some portraits on the go and just being able to pop into your bag. So in case you need a third light, a rim light, or something like that, or indeed a key light, this is just brilliant to have on you at all times. So these are my choices uh, for my lights today. A real mixture of power. This one's 76 watt seconds, this one is 500 watt seconds. So a real difference between them. But just having the range is really helpful for me. Who knows what we'll end up with, but until we're outside, we're not gonna know.
Now the reason that I love shooting with Sony and Profoto as a combination is the mirrorless is wonderful for, if I'm working with off-camera flash for example, for me to be able to just see exactly what I'm getting straight away, it eliminates the need for test shots. I'm seeing live what my settings are. So this is wonderful for me because I can just rock up really quickly, see what the ambient's doing, dial that in, and then from that point I can just pop on the Profoto trigger, take a TTL test shot, and I'm pretty much there, so it speeds up my workflow massively. Secondary to that as well is having a lighter camera, a smaller camera, all of this is so compact, it means that I can pretty much take all the gear that I need, or even some extra, on location, and I'm not sort of dragging it around worrying about weights and all those kinds of things. So the combination of having that light, mirrorless, really flexible, fantastic dynamic range, wonderful detail. I've pretty much got everything that I need alongside a flash system, which is so complex and so intelligent that it can just remember TTL settings, I can control it all from my remote on the top of my camera. It enables me to just concentrate on what I need to do, which is engage with my model and think about my compositions and getting the shots that I need. Now before we get started, there's something that I do want to mention, which is why would you even need studio shots and outdoor shots? Well, let's imagine if it's for a campaign, and certainly if it's going to print, you might have an article where you've got a leading image, so something that needs to be strong, powerful, really grab your attention. So that's why we're going to begin in the studio with those strong portrait shots. After that, what we'll probably do, for instance, if it was an article, we might need sort of filler shots as it were. So more lifestyle, a bit more documentary. That's what we're going to be shooting outside for. But for right now, what I'm going to do is get set up. I'm going to add some lights and sort of, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to get a few lights set up so that I can bring in my client and pretty much from there we can decide how to pose her and how to light her to get some real dramatic, strong, eye-catching images that would really jump out of you, out at you if it was going to lead a campaign. So that's our job for now. So let's firstly set up the studio and let's begin with the most important thing, the lights. So I'm going to bring these up. I'm just going to pop them onto the lighting stands here. Again, the best thing about this is I have absolutely no cables to worry about. So that gives me so much flexibility. So that's one. Perfect. Let's get the next one. So for my third light, I think what I'm going to do is mount it to a boom arm, but I'll probably do that last. What I'm thinking for these at the moment is there'll probably be rim lights or you know, some kind of side lighting. Um, generally with three lights, that gives me a lot of options, but I'll put the boom arm and put that up and mount that one last, just because I might need a bit of help with that because you don't want to get that wrong because that could be expensive. So next, thinking about modifiers, what am I going to use? If we're going to use some rim lights, I'd like to use the one by threes um, from Profoto. Uh, so this is all part of the OCF range. They, the reason I love this is they pack down really small. Um, so I can store them or take them on location really easily. Now, if ever you get a bit confused about uh, how to mount these, thankfully they have a color coded system on the back. So we basically go red to red on the speed ring, which is fantastic. So you just line those up. And then, Let's just undo that one. Click them in place. And that pretty much means you don't end up wrestling with the softbox and uh, you can just get it mounted up fairly quickly and good to go. So let's mount this to the front. Snap it on. And then that's one. We'll just repeat the next one. Perfect, so that's my two rim lights sort of ready to go. Now I might use those in different ways, but certainly for what I'm thinking initially is to do kind of the classic two lights around the side and one light overhead. So for the light overhead, thinking about the ceiling height, I think what I will probably shoot with is something quite directional. So I'll probably use a two by three softbox. That should give me enough headroom above my model to be able to mount it up right over the top. Um, if I use something a little larger like an Octo, which would be preferable, I'm just concerned about the height of my client and also having that headroom. So let's use a 2x3 for now. Now this time, because we've got a different shape softbox, we've got blue to blue. So just find the blue on the speed ring, line it up and click it in. Pick them in. 
Here we go. Certainly for the first shot that I'm thinking of is I think I'm going to add a grid over the front of it. Now what grids do is they actually focus the light and make and just give it a little bit more contrast. Now what I want, don't really want from this is for the light to be going everywhere. So one thing I've learned from experience is to attach the grid before you put it on a boom arm and put it right up where you can't reach it anymore. So that's my next thing that I'm going to do. Just pop that there. And this is great, this just mounts over the top. In the corners. Oh. Always fun to do by yourself. Next is for the third light and uh, what I've established is um, let's do all the things we need to do now. Um, even though we can control it with the back of the remote, what we need to establish first is to make sure that they are all on the same channel because otherwise I'll be reaching up there, up on that boom arm and it'll be too much. So we're on channel two and this is head C. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just change this to make it head A um, just so that I can know that this is going to be my key light and it's easier for me to remember. So let's turn it on, mount it in here. Let's just make sure that the front is flat. Fantastic. Okay, this is the tricky part. Next I've got to get this onto the boom arm. Now I'm going to um, ask my friend to help me with this because uh, getting this up and keeping the balance right is kind of important. So now we know that they are all on the same channel, which is really important. We've got, this is head A. I generally use A as my key light just to try and keep it, you know, simple. And I know that that's like, comes first. And then from here, I've got head B. So most of the time I'll use a background light with head B, just B for background, helps me remember it. And then for the third light, I've done C. Now what I could do is because I'm gonna have these at equal power, I could have them both on B. But for me, I just prefer to have them independently just so I can control them and I'll probably end up moving them anyway. So head A, key light, B, C. Let's hope I don't mix it up. Iman, if you want to come in for me, that'd be great. If you can stand sort of right in the center for me, that'd be great, right, let's have a look. Perfect, right, now, what I'm gonna do is probably a mixture of sort of straight on profile. Right, so most importantly now is to mount my trigger onto the top of my camera. That will enable me to control each of these lights independently. So that's good. Um, I've got my 85mm 1.4 because of course my favourite lens, this is what I'm going to be using. So first thing I need to do is figure out what the lights are doing. So I think it's better to sort of set up one light at a time. Now what I'm going to do is actually from here is I'm going to turn off the lights at the back. So just on my remote I'm going to turn those two off and we will go Onto the top light. Now, I think, Dave, if you can move that a little bit further in, that's perfect, well done. Great, that's wonderful. So what I'm looking for is I want this to be right over the front. It's just gonna shoot down in front of him on here. So what I'm gonna do is put this onto TTL. So through the lens metering is how this is going to be. All right, perfect to join me on. Don't mind about the thing, because I'm just gonna take a light test. So that sounded quite powerful but it looks good already, excellent. So with TTL, basically it's reading the scene and it's calculating how much power it thinks I need to use. Now for me, I think that's okay, but I might dial it down a little bit. Head A selected, one, two, three, four, five. Half stop of power, I'm gonna take that down. Let's go again. Perfect, wonderful. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is switch that around. So I'm gonna go, the back light's gonna be on and I'm gonna turn the top light actually off. Right, okay, again, I'm not going to use TTL for this because it will probably read the scene completely wrong because it's facing me. So what I did do initially is I set both lights on the background at half, at uh, the middle of the power range, so they're on power five. I feel like it could be distance, but this one is a little bit stronger. So um, I'm going to put head C, let's just check I've got the right one. Yeah, I'm just test with the modeling light. Up half a stop, let's go again. Perfect, so now they match and they balance. Introduce the top one back again, and we are ready to shoot. Let's take the final test. Great three light set up. So here, this is just the key light, so this is just the light overhead. So this is the two by three softbox with the grid. And next, we've got the rim light. So I actually increased the power on the right side. So now what I'm looking for is both of those rim lights to be even each side, just to make a little highlight around the, the side of the outfit and on the side of Iman's face. 
And so when they all work together, that's what you're looking at. Now these are looking good, they're looking great. I love that the downwards dramatic kind of shot. I might shoot one more of those without the rim lights, but what I also want to do is I want to get some portraits of her face. Now how I've positioned the light is such that it is going to fall straight down and cause some very dark shadows. Great for drama, but not so great if we want to see a portrait look into her eyes. So I'm going to tweak that a little bit more. So before we do that, let's just go ahead and kill the two backlights. And we'll go final position back in here one more time, straight down the barrel. That's wonderful, well done. Perfect, three, two, one. Excellent, and then go your head up again. So chin up, that's lovely, eyes closed. Brilliant, you got it, girl. Lovely, great. Really good, it's looking awesome. So I'm shooting manual, I always do. I want complete control over the camera. In terms of shutter speed, now what I want to do is stay under the sync speed, so I'm at 1 125th of a second, and I'm trying to choose an aperture to match that. So when I say to match, what I'm looking for is to shut out all of the ambient light in the room. So what I've actually done is I've assigned a button on my Sony here so that I can actually preview, if I push that down, just to see what available light is actually coming into the frame. So thankfully, none of the overheads are affecting my image, and so that's good. ISO 100, I always keep it at minimum uh, because of course it's just a habit of mine. I know these cameras can shoot through the roof, but for me, I like to keep it as low as possible. It's just habit. File format, I'm gonna be shooting RAW and JPEG. And the reason for that is because I like to upload the JPEGs um, just unedited as they are, send them straight to the client. And once of course they've made their selections, then I go ahead and edit the RAWs. So we're shooting on RAW and JPEG. So when I'm shooting here as well, I'm shooting slightly off centre. The reason being is if it's for a campaign and we need to add text or anything like that, there's negative space over so anybody can just, you know, the brand can add their logo or anything else on the side as well there. So we've got some negative space on that side. Looking great. Do you know what? I love that in my perfect as you are. So we're going to try some looking straight out. That's great. So she's not looking at the camera. Excellent. Perfect. That elbow, I might bring it out just a, that's wonderful, well done. Excellent. Good, it might bring your chin up, that's it, lovely. Just using the Sony Eye Autofocus here, which is fantastic because it just means that however I frame, it's always going to track Iman's eye. If you can just look to camera for me for a couple, Iman, that's wonderful, well done, really, really nice. So it just means that whichever way I turn, it's always gonna focus on the eye, which is great. Going right in here just to check sharpness and yeah, bang on, really nice. So for this next shot, what I'm hoping to do is get a very quick but dramatic portrait. Now this is all about speed getting set up here. Now as I said before, with the mirrorless I can see exactly what exposure I'm getting with the settings. So I'm going to drop down to 2.8 to make it nice and you know shallow depth of field, drop that out. But what I want to do is shut down the sky to make sure that the sky is nice and dark because it's in and out, it's blue that way, it's dark and moody this way. So pretty much here I've decided I want to shoot at 2.8, so aperture is pretty much set. Now because the sun is in and out, I'm deciding to raise my shutter speed when it gets more sunny or take it down when the clouds over again. So I'm at one eight thousandth of a second when the sun's out to make sure that I still retain the detail in the sky and anywhere else where the sun may be hitting. It's this kind of day, this is real life, this is what it's like, sun's in, sun's out. But hopefully in the way that I hope to shoot this and position him on, if the sun does come out, we can use that as a rim light and a hair light behind her and it'll still work out quite well. If you can take a half step back now, that's perfect. So always I'm trying to get my flash as close as I can as possible. So on TTL, the camera's read the scene and decided how much flash it needs. Good, so the light's getting her face perfectly. That's good. We could see in real life what was happening. Then we just pop the flash up, TTL. It's done a great job of reading the scene and we could leave it at that. So if you lean forward again for me, Amanda, that's perfect. And just turn your head towards me. What I'm trying to do down at this, this shallow depth of field is I want to blur some foreground and having a leading line across the image. Now, I, I can't really get down here, so having this flip out monitor is so much easier. I can bring right down low, get it almost on the floor down where she is. All the time, I've just got to be aware of what's behind in the composition because what I don't want is Emma to have like a tree coming out of her head so much, or yeah, if it's a dark area that's blurred, I'm happy with that. But you know, anything else that's obvious or any cars, it makes it quite difficult. So that's good. Okay, lovely. That's looking good. Well done, guys. 
Great, so now we've got some sort of portraits of him. I'm warming up, you know, kind of real shallow depth of field using the 85 and I was shooting down at 1.4. What I'm going to do next is actually put on the 70 to 200 because I want to use that sort of telephoto sort of zoom in system. And what I want to do as well is really kind of make the most of that Sony autofocus. So as she's running towards me, I want it to be able to track her and always keep up. Now, the sun is in and out the whole time, so that could affect our exposure. It may not be perfect, but let's at least give it a go. Perfect, well done. Excellent, nice work, well done. I'm going to shoot you in the sun, so we'll expose to the sun. So if you stand on the edge of where, that, where the sun is uh, forming that line there, and then we'll start from there. So what's important here is that I want to make sure that my images are nice and sharp. So firstly, in the terms of the drive mode, I'm going on to continuous shooting and high because I want to make sure I can press the shutter down and get lots of frames really quickly. The other thing that's important is the focus mode. What I've gone for here is a tracking on wide. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to pick up her face and because it's on wide tracking, it will pick her up as she's running towards me and continue to focus. So I can even zoom out, I'm hoping that I'll be able to zoom out and shoot at the same time, making sure that she is always in focus and it allows me to get different compositions, zoom in and out, she's always in focus and we can shoot really quickly to get lots of action shots as we go. Great, really good, well done, well done, fantastic. If I was to give you three portrait photography tips, it would be these. Firstly, forget about the gear for a second. You must connect with your client. It's really important that whoever you're photographing, you are able to connect with them somehow. So just make sure you have a chat before you start. You know, try and talk about anything but the shoot itself because you want to try to get them relaxed and that way you can also read their expressions, see how they look. If they're starting to look nervous, you've already seen that and you know how to basically talk them down. Just quit what you're doing for a minute. Talk to them for a second because it's important that you get a good expression. You could have all the most incredible gear in the world, all the technical gear in the world, but if you don't have a connection with your client, your portrait is over. So connection is really important. Tip number two. For me, that's all about lens choice. Now being a portrait photographer, this is quite an important one. I would never say that there's a right or wrong lens. However, just be aware of your focal length when you're shooting portraits. The reason being is when you're up close, if you're using a wide angle and you're shooting really close, it can distort the features and that's not flattering for anyone. For me, if I'm sort of shooting here upwards, it will be something like an 85, 100 mil, even a 200 mil. They are all good focal lengths to keep that in proportion. Even just be careful with a 50 mil if you're coming too close because it's really important that we make an accurate representation of what somebody looks like. Tip number three, this is lighting and this will make or break your image. Now it doesn't mean that you have to use artificial light at all, I'm not saying that at all, but try to be aware of different positions and lighting patterns on the face. You can find lots of information about how to learn the lighting patterns that can either slim down a face, make it wider, or just give, create different shapes. But either way, just try to make sure that you learn a little bit about lighting, whether you're shooting outside in natural light or inside with flash, just so you know that you can create the most flattering portraits possible for your client. It's important when you're shooting campaigns like this to so where you can, try to include as many variations for your models or your clients as possible. The reason being, for instance, when we shot the Asics campaign, we had seven runners, all from different parts of Europe. So we had all different nationalities, we had all different ages, we had pretty much everything. So that when young women are viewing this, they can feel like they're included. So when they're watching a campaign, when they're looking at these images, they feel that that could be me. And it's all about inspiring people. So the more variety you can get, the more inclusive it is, the better. If I was to give you a tip about a career in photography, it would be to not focus on what everyone else is doing. You may feel sometimes that the market is saturated and there's not enough room for everyone and everyone's a photographer, but you know what? There is room for all of us because we are never going to take the same photograph. If you lined up 10 people, everyone would take a different photograph and see things a slightly different way. And therefore, there will be 10 different clients for each of those people. So don't feel bogged down. Don't feel like you're not able to do it or there's no place for you in the market. There is. Just be yourself, do what you do best and make sure you do it with enthusiasm and passion and that will see you through. And finally, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Sony and to Profoto, both of which are 
absolutely key in my workflow and with what I use. It's just wonderful to have those guys on board with me and to have the support there. It's a fantastic system, highly recommended, and it works for me every time. Don't forget to check out the rest of the Women in the Industry pieces from WEX. And also, we'd love for you to get involved with this. So if you're going to give it a go, make sure you tag your images with hashtag WEXHowTo.